Hello GW Alpha Testers and future GW Host Managers. My name is Said Martinez Calderon, Creative Director for Global Entrepreneurship Week. And today I'm going to be giving you a crash course on the Drupal theme site and the contents of the pages of which you will be able to change and I'll also be mentioning which pages you will not be able to change. And so you should have received a handbook PDF of which you open up and even though this uh, the beginning is mostly for the alpha testers this is also applicable for future site managers so as you can see this is going to give you highlights of the main points such as partnerships adding activities um, registering those partnerships um, selecting your own uh, admin information your contact your media kit uh, having access to your statistics and um, being able to control your social networks. So as an example, I'm going to be showing you through the USA uh, theme template. So double click on your respective link and you'll be redirected to the site. Uh, I didn't have to um, log in with the information provided to get to the page since I had already done it in a previous session but that is the information you're going to be accessing from here for the first page and then once you want to sign in as a manager you'll be using this information uh, I'd like to state right now that you will not be signing as a national host so you can just ignore this you are a site manager so going back to it this is what your general user is going to be looking like any uh, member that is not logged in it's gonna have this and in a little bit you're going to see the difference in being a site manager viewing the site and then just being in part of the general public and speeding through you're gonna have your uh, homepage sliders which you will be able to add and control you have a counter you have statistics of your activities and partners you have a way and calls to actions to either become a partner or find an activity the latest news is pretty much what a blog posting would be and once you are adding those activities they're going to be automatically sent to this uh, rotating uh, sidebar you will also be able to add testimonials from notable figures having your VIP speakers whether it be in government entrepreneurs or in education you're going to be able to spotlight a particular partner and here is where you're going to have a list of your top GW partners. Later on, I'm also going to teach you how to uh, create a MailChimp newsletter and um, generate an API so that you can start gathering more accurate data over your users and be able to send relevant information to whoever decides to sign up to your particular newsletter. There are also a few things that are not they are they are static and you cannot change them such as information about our global sponsors and our global social networks going back to the main navigation you will not be able to modify these pages themselves but I will show you a way to create custom pages and add them to the custom menu which will show up after the contact section so I'm gonna go through a few static pages this is the about page where you have image content and uh, if you'd like you can also add an embed a Vimeo or YouTube link which I can show you later on as well as you will notice you're also going to have the same format for the images for which I'm gonna provide documentation and give you the exact ratio of the size for example for this uh, page size image, it's going to be 620 pixels by 180. And um, if you do not have the exact measurements, Drupal will make its best effort to try to guesstimate how it can shrink down proportionally. And uh, it's, it's uh, generally a best practice to use the exact measurement because there might be an item or a subject in your composition that you really want to stress the point and it might not show up in the final upload. Activities, for an example, we've only had one activity and that is GW, but here's where you're gonna see the information of everything you need to know about that activity, including searches, whether this is an in-person or a virtual activity. We have added a rating system 
to the uh, GW activities, which you can sort through popularity or the time of the activity. The supporter section currently is empty because we have not yet added them, uh, but it's pretty much self-explanatory with the way you want to differentiate your partners from your supporters. And if we go back to activities, you can see that we have pre-populated uh, at least two of them just for the sake of an example. We've streamlined the way that we're uh, presenting our resources by being able to assign tags to them, whether they be an audio, a document being PDF or a Word document, integrate image galleries with Flickr, upload images and logos to provide resources for your new supporters and partners, and also how to embed more YouTube and Vimeo links, which they're really nice and organized. And also there's also filtering uh, systems that you can that you can search through. Not much has changed in the news and uh, press releases other than we've been able to integrate them a little bit more and um, these are very straightforward in the way that we've been doing them before with the exception that now instead of having to send your um, blog post to the global staff and have us approve them we cannot do this faster by you being able to um, directly upload them yourself. We have uh, basic contact forms for your public to get in contact whoever you make your site manager for the information that you can see on the right side. So now that you've seen how your GW template will look to the general public, we're going to log in as a site manager. And if you remember, going back to your handbook, is the second part of your Drupal admin roles. So once you log in, uh, this is where you're going to populate the field. You go. And the first change that you're going to see right away is that the right side has a new menu. And this is your manager menu for which you can control everything, well, almost everything that's going on in your GW template. So we're going to start from the beginning by going to the home page and we'll click the first one being all content this is the general search place where you can find anything ranging from pages to blog posts press clippings resources information about yourself or your other contact points being the partners or supporters alright we're gonna try to bullet through quickly so I can keep this as short as possible to create an activity, straightforward. Activity name, which is a requirement that you will see each time you see a red asterisk. Without this, these will not be able to uh, go through the database. You can decide whether this be on a website being virtual, through screencast, or in person. When will it be? A quick little summary, which you're going to see when you are seeing the listing of the activities. A good practice for this is to keep it under 140 characters, similar to do Twitter style. And then finally, you can have the full subscription, or pardon me, full description of the information and content about your activity. And uh, we've tried to keep a very minimum as far as styling, so you can create unordered or ordered list and also add a few external links. Here you can have levels of order importance to your phone number to have a contact, your main website, select who your audience is going to be. And this is especially important and required as this is going to help uh, the search filtering system to when you are trying to organize or have someone that wants to have only specific types of activities show up. And uh, again, if you have any issues as to whether what any of these mean, just simply roll over the little part. And this is what's going to give you information about either how to enter your data or more about the content field itself. For example, in the registration URL, this is telling you that you can. Ooh, hold on, can we make sure it's hard to open it? All right. Let me give you the other example I was looking for in the first website. Okay, so here is where you can specify that it has to start with an HTTP tag. Uh, so that it can automatically link as a real URL as opposed to just giving domain.org or www.domain.org. 
So these are especially helpful. If we're going to go back to the registration URL, which was not the original example I wanted to do, uh, this is um, to give you the direct uh, link within your website of for where the person might be able to register for the event. And also you can start your start date and end date, which it already has the format that it's required, and the format for when you can see right there. Okay, moving along, we are going to create a venue. The venue, you might have several activities that are taking place at the same location. And to create a listing for that, you simply populate it one time, and it's going to be able to, um, Drupal will be able to differentiate when several activities are taking place at the same place. So basic information, and uh, the more information you're able to provide, the higher ranking uh, this is going to have in your activities listing and uh, it by default you know it has a likelihood of becoming more popular and more people will go to it it'll get better exposure create new story new story is uh, pretty much creating a blog post also very straightforward minimal styling you'll be able to do add a file to it and uh, if it's already an activity that you've registered, you can just simply get the link to that activity section and it's going to provide it and give more information about that. To create a press clipping, this is um, similar to the blog post, but this is much more sweet and to the point. And uh, this is where you have your uh, press releases. When I had mentioned that you can create a page, this is where it's going to be a static page that not too much functionality can happen within it as far as submitting forms and whatnot, but you're more than welcome to add uh, links within the page or links to other um, external pages. And uh, once you're able to publish it, I'll show you in a little bit uh, towards the end how you can get it to the top navigation. Create testimonial is when you're, when I mentioned earlier that you can have uh, your VIP um, people and uh, and record the nice and awesome things they've been saying about GW which you're gonna see at the um, home page section that I showed earlier uh, ignore the create advertisement as this is some um, this is something that we're working on and trying to decide how we can uh, put the best use to it but for now it seems that we're gonna take it out since Creating advertisements, it's something that comes with a general boilerplate package with a Drupal theme sets. So for now, we're just going to ignore it. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the resources as they're very basic. And we're trying to go this through um, so we can go quickly through things. But again, title, upload your document. Four, which is awesome because you have up to 128 megabytes, which is more than enough with any um, text document when it was created, a little bit about it, and you publish it. Video, this is where you can embed um, either a YouTube video or a Vimeo link, and here it gives you the format on how you can put it in. Or if you have it something, you know, say a public link on your Dropbox or Google Drive, you're more than welcome to add those other links. And again, description, publish it. Isn't this easy? So easy. Create audio. Here it gives you the um, file format that it's able to upload. Again, it has to be less than 128 megabytes, but if it's just an audio clipping, I have not seen anything over 10. Image. Uh, again, this is where you can zip up things. And um, actually, no, my mistake. Uh, this only accepts PNGs, GIFs, JPEGs, and the other format of the JPEG. Okay, uh, one that's really cool and I'm really excited about is uh, integrating Flickr, where you can now upload uh, Flickr sets uh, to your web page, and this will be the one I'll show how it looks like. So after you have your title of it, you locate the Flickr set URL by going to the set specifically. For example, we're going to use the GEC 2012, copy it, uh, paste it, and when you see it, you're going to see it in the resources section and it's going to show you that you can view this set and it's just so beautiful and streamlined in the way that you can 
you know, show highlights of what's going on during your events. All right, so now for the user's administration. Here is where you can delegate and search for uh, your host um, manager for the partners and any other administrative um, rights you give to any other users. Partnership request is a queue where you're going to see uh, people that are going to want to visit you then visit your page and request to be a partner which I will navigate to the home page from the other tab and um, alright you will see it down here where it says submit activity but because I'm logged in it's not giving me that but this is where you're gonna see the request partnership and this is where you're gonna be able to decide what you wanna do with those requests in the same way of having those requests, you can also pre-populate information about pre-approved uh, partners or just other people within your staff and you can give them the roles down here. One of the great things about um, this new platform with Drupal is that we can provide uh, up-to-date statistics about your supporters the level of importance of the supporters and those are activities they're doing whether it's within GW or, or other dates other than that week. So this is great for when you're trying to create impact reports and uh, bring more people on board and tell them how awesome GW is and how much it's growing. Okay now for the settings. General settings uh, this is some um, a few other fields where you can adjust when the next GW is going to be. Uh, you can integrate your iCalendar file, uh, create, uh, integrate um, your own Twitter. Here I just have mine as a substitute. The introduction test that you want to tell uh, to your prospective partners when they decide to join GW with you. The local settings is uh, more so for your uh, your site manager and contact information, which you are going to see, as I showed you before, on the contact section on the sidebar right here. So you can update them as you like. And uh, down here is where you're going to be able to integrate uh, your own social networks. Currently, we have Flickr, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. For theme settings, um, I will have to get back on you for this one because, to my understanding, Kaufman has to have priority over any other partner or supporter that you may have. But this one in particular is where it's going to show at the top right side. And however that changes, this is where you can uh, choose a different file and upload it. And again, you can also choose at certain times to not use the local logo and it will disappear. But for now, we'll leave this unchecked. For the media kit, uh, this one you may have, it's the same, almost the same as the contact information, but whether you might have a different person that uh, talks exclusively to the media, you can set those uh, uh, contact information there. For the homepage slider, this is what you see that's on the rotating banner at the very front and for this the size is 940 pixels by 250 pixels and here as you click through you can give a title of it which it's not going to show on the main section which I'll show you on the next tab it's not going to show here but it's a way for Drupal to be able to uh, create the listing for them when you want to locate them say for example on your all context section but what we'll, we'll show to the public is the description sh section. And um, the thing that you're going to find tricky about this is how you can say the most with the least. Because if you start adding too much content, the square itself will go out of the bound box. So it's going to be a little uh, push and pull as far as how much content you can put in there. And then here you can decide the weight and the weight is basically what image is going to show first. 
and it's pretty it's pretty easy really simple really fun stuff all right now for the custom menu here is where I mentioned how you create a page so we're gonna backtrack a little bit and we're gonna create a dummy page we're gonna call it exactly that dummy and something about dummies which is course and then you publish it but it will not automatically go to the main section one of the reasons for that is that you might not want it to be up there and you just want to copy and paste it within a link of a blog post or some other direction that you don't want anyone doesn't know that doesn't already know about it to know about it if that makes sense but if you do want to add it to the custom menu after the context section you will navigate to the custom menu section and uh, here is where you are not showing up you little jerk pardon my French where were you alright well see that's the great thing we're beta testing because even I'm still learning alright so dummy man this bit me on the butt really quickly alright let's publish it Oh, all right my mistake so I, even though I published it it did not put it in the queue and give me the ability to add it to the custom menu which this one it's so clear and in my face anyway you click it to add it to the custom menu and it's already up here where we want it to be who are you calling dummy and again there's a few settings once you're adding more pages Here's where you can have a little more control as to, you know, the position of which one goes first, which one goes next, after the context section. But because we only have one for now, it's only giving me that one option to either leave it there or remove it. And if you have gone through here and you've listened to me talk this far, I congratulate you. And you're going to be one of the best uh, site administrators and site managers. But for the last thing, if you still want to learn a little bit more, is integrating your GW MailChimp newsletter. So MailChimp is an awesome platform for newsletters because it plays nice with not necessarily open source, but it, it likes to share and be shared. So here to create newsletters, you're going to have listings. For now, we only have the GW test newsletter, and we can control the settings and give us a little information about what those forms are going to have. So for example, if we want to integrate MailChimp within it, we're going to have to go and generate a MailChimp API key, which is pretty much just asking permission for uh, to MailChimp and say, hey, you know, we want to be able to add our users to our newsletter uh, through this access point. So to get this list, you're going to create a new tab uh, I won't show you how to create a new MailChimp account. It's pretty much self-explanatory. If you can create an email address, you can create a MailChimp address. But to give you an even faster crash course, I'm going to assume you already have MailChimp uh, as part of your campaigns. So once you go to your own uh, section for it, you're going to go to account. And there's going to be under extras, API keys and authorized apps. And here, we've already created ours, but you're more than welcome to add an extra key, and then you're going to copy that information, and then you're going to go back and paste it, save configuration, and it's easy as pie. All right? So I want to thank you for having lasted this long. I don't even know how long this tutorial has been, even though I tell you it's quick. I feel like I'm always lying. Anyway, get in touch at smartinez at unleashingideas.org and email me about anything, any questions that you may have. Uh, I'll see how quickly I can get to you um, to it because I myself am also learning uh, how to navigate through our new template 
and uh, there's a specific way that we want you to submit your tickets and if I can just navigate to it let me show you you will have to do it in this manner just so that we can we don't have to email back and forth and get more information this is the information that we require so that we can send to our developers uh, if we ourselves can't figure it out so when you're reporting it give me uh, five points on your listing a URL of where you're stuck on what operating system you're working on whether it be a, a Macintosh, a PC, or a Linux device. You have to tell us what version of the browser. Currently, I am working with Chrome, and if you go to Chrome and go to about Google Chrome, here it's giving me information of what version I'm at. Okay? You can be using Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Opera, or any other browser, I have no idea. And as far as your operating system, usually on, on Mac, you can just go about this Mac, and it's going to tell you what version of that it is. Okay. And what other point? Uh, role, which you were uh, signed in. More than likely, you're a site manager, but specify it either way. And I didn't finish this one. And please provide a screenshot of what the prompt was you might get a little pop-up saying that there's an error or you may get a link that's just faulty and please give us a, a, a screen grab um, if I can remember on a Mac you're going to use command shift 4 and you're gonna get crosshairs right and then when you have the crosshairs you're gonna click and drag over the section that you're having a problem with and you let go and you're gonna hear that little shutter that means that it's taking a picture which uh, usually it goes to your desktop or it goes to your downloads folder so whatever section you delegate it to also be able to include this in your email and uh, let me do a quick search on how to take screen grabs for a PC because I can never remember so PC screenshot Okay. Alright, it says here that to take a screenshot with a PC, press the print screen button and hold down the Alt key before pressing the print screen button to confine the screenshot to the foremost window. Okay, this is a little bit more confusing than I thought it'd be. If you don't already know, I'm a Mac guy. Uh, but yeah, do a Google search and <laughs> take a screen grab for a PC, and that you'll be able to take the screenshot for it. So I thank you for having listened to me all these, I don't know how long this has been. And uh, please play around with it as much as you can. So the faster you're able to find things or, or, or really get an understanding of them, we'll be able to generate uh, the next... Um, templates for the rest of our host and we can prepare for an awesome GW 2012. All right. My name is Said Martinez Calderon and I thank you.